Hey everyone, today I'm going to point out one small detail about every survivor, focusing mainly on their visual or sound design, and also their lore. These were quite hard to pick out, and if you've watched a few of my videos, some of these will be familiar. But there should be some stuff you didn't know still. Let's get into it. For Dwight, I kind of have two different possible, but not entirely certain details. First off, a red pen can be seen in Dwight's pocket, and also a large amount of blood, specifically on his left side, his right looking fairly clean. This is a possible reference to Shaun of the Dead, and the recurring gag of, you've got red on you. You got red on you. And develop symptoms similar to those displayed by their you. attackers. Interestingly, Dwight and Sean also share many similarities and personality traits, becoming unlikely leaders in dire situations. Second, Dwight's last name, Fairfield, may be a reference to the Left 4 Dead series, with the events of those games taking place primarily in the town of Fairfield. Meg's lucky number is mentioned to be number 14, in her Corvid's jersey cosmetic. In her tome cutscene, it interestingly takes her 14 seconds to complete what looks to be the 100 meter spot. Print. Claudette's favourite flower is the Ghost Orchid, a rare flower from Cuba and Florida, mentioned in a charm released in the Tome 6 Rift. Another plant-based thing for her is that botany knowledge features a quote, but that quote is not accredited to Claudette herself, like other perks are. Strange. Jake's likeness is that of behaviour product manager, Alex Lynn. Alex's toolbox is also named after Alex Lynn, the connection between all of these being their focus on sabotaging, Jake with saboteur, and Alex's toolbox box giving you increased sabotage speed. Alex Lim was known to use a toolbox and go around sabotaging during games testing, which is why the sabotaging toolbox was named after him. Where most other characters have normal descriptions for their prestige clothing, Nia's are slightly strange, and seem far more relevant to Nurse than Nia. Most prestige clothes simply describe the clothing, and at least mention the character, but Nia's are just these strange, semi-related Nurse descriptions that don't seem that relevant to Nia. Aside her being part of the same chapter as Nurse, there's not much connection. Laurie does not have the likeness of Jamie Lee Curtis from the Halloween films. Her appearance is actually based on her Halloween comic series version. Ace has a missing button on one of his sleeves, totaling 7 instead of 8, 7 being commonly called a lucky number. In Left 4 Dead, Bill is the only one who seems to recognise the witch in the opening cinematic, after a flashlight is shined on it, where the rest of the crew don't. We're gonna break off! Therefore, it's pretty likely that the large tear on the back of his jacket was from his first encounter with a witch. Feng's shirt pictures her old esports team, the Laser Bears, this logo being a reference to a prior behaviour project named Naughty Bear. She further has a Chinese character on her shoulder that means 9. Presumably, this is her player number on the Laser Bears team. David's perk, Dead Hard, and its flavour text possibly references the same set of events that resulted in his unconquered outfit look. Dead Hard reads, We were walking through to Ginnel one night, when a beer bottle flew past me, then another, and another. I thought to myself, gonna have some fun here lads. <laughs> Let's get stuck in. It were a right dust up, I swear down. This of course describes a fight between seemingly two groups, started by the throwing of beer bottles. The unconquered outfit mentions a grisly brawl, with David looking very battered, but unconquered, and we can visibly see shards of glass stabbed into David's back possibly from the thrown bottles. The pendant Quinton wears is the same one he hides at the beginning of the A Nightmare on Elm Street 2010 film, from Nancy, and also later places around Nancy's neck before she attempts to bait out Freddy, believing it will protect her, stating that he has to believe in something. Tap has a scar visible on his neck after his throat was slit and sore. Although faint, it is there. Kate has some quite large and visible tattoos, primarily on her left arm and right leg. However, she also has a third tattoo visible on her right shoulder of a crescent moon. 
Adam's base trench coat is called Suyu Ready Trench Coat. Suyu in East Asia is the rainy season. It's further interesting as this season spans from September to November, with Adam releasing in September 2018, making the date in which the entity took him far more concise, and probably actually on his release date. Another interesting thing about this, and his other base trench coat, is that the graduation day suit appears far cleaner, and with no blood. This outfit being taken from further into the past, where his base suit likely depicts the state of of the coat after the train derailment, when he was taken into the realm. Jeff has a few interesting details. His love for brewing and beer can be seen by the can opener around his waist. There's also a visible scar over his eye from his fight that nearly blinded him and made him turn his life around. Finally, the heavy metal band shirt he wears possibly took inspiration from the band Death having similar imagery and writing style. Jane's base outfit recolors each name and episode title of the Jane Romero show. These include Making Dreams Come True, Jane's Favorite Books, You Can Do It, Here's How, and Medical Advice with Dr. Roy. As another little addition, and something really random I saw whilst I was looking through all this stuff, in the flavour text of her perk, Poised, there is no set of quotation marks to close the quotation out, only to open it. Meaning the dash Jane Romero is technically part of the quote. After waiting for five minutes in the lobby, Ash will say a variety of fourth wall breaking lines to the player. Come on kid, push the button. What is this, the staring contest? Come on, let's go. Nancy's necklace, although hard to make out, is a pair of ballet slippers, which she wears at points throughout the series. Steve's hair cosmetic named Perfect Hair references the season two scene with Dustin on the train tracks. Dustin says, not everyone can have your perfect hair. Not everyone can have your perfect hair, all right? It's not about the hair, man. And Steve then proceeds to tell him the products he uses to get the hair he has. The back of Yui's jacket apparently reads Sakura 7, the name of Yui's group. The bottom text is something along the lines of fool seven times and get up eight, and is a Japanese idiom about life's ups and downs. In a charm, Zarina's favourite camera is pictured, and named as the Bravo Shot H31X. This camera appears to be the same one seen on her obsessive project outfit, only with a longer lens attached. Cheryl's perk, Repressed Alliance, is the only survivor perk in the game that allows you to summon the entity to do an action of your choice. In this case, blocking a generator by literally summoning the entity's claws. This makes a lot of sense, with Cheryl being one of the stronger and more magical survivors. In Felix's lore, it mentions that he receives both the German National Design Award and Swiss Architect Medal. These are actually both real awards, which is odd, with the DBD often having fake names for things. It further mentions he was only 23 when he did this, making him, I believe, the youngest winner of both. Just before she is taken, Elodie is stabbed in her side by a Black Veil cult member. The scar from this wound is visible, although very faint, on her right side. One of Yunjin's sleeves has a triangular point to it. This is the same type of sleeve that the Trickster has also, the combination of the two possibly showing her good and bad side side or it's possibly just a visual thing to show the link between artist and producer. Both Jill and Leon have never met each other before, with them technically only meeting for the first time after entering the realm. So that opening cinematic for the chapter is actually their first meeting. <laughs> for an extra detail for them both too, they both possess tools around their belts. That probably should have been removed. Jill has a literal knife, <laughs> and Leon has a set of handcuffs. They also also both have radios. Michaela is the only character in the realm to have tattoos that include multiple colours. The clearest one is visible on her waist. In the portrait of a murder chapter trailer, we can see a baseball bat, glove, and also encased bull on his desk, all in Jonah's room. When brightening this image, you can further see what looks to be another baseball and glove on the floor. I guess he really loves baseball. The images of Yuichi's perks, parental guidance, and boondark theory are taken from the original Ringu film, as almost exact shots, parental guidance depicting a scene with Yoichi as a child in the rain, Boondark Theory depicting the character often referred to as Talman. Alright, well, that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and be sure to drop your own thoughts or details you know of down below. Thanks, and goodbye.